Hello everybody and welcome to lesson 6.2 in the Alice tutorial series. Today we're going to be animating some carnival equipment and this is a really good build off of lesson 6.1 where we introduced the do together statement. We made a uh, coach animation and we made uh, an individual walk using do togethers. But one of the things that lesson 6.1 didn't do a very good job of was explaining a concept called nested functions or nested methods. I explained that using a do in order statement was pretty much what happened by default. That a do together statement, you drag the little block and you put what you want to do together. And most of my students then ask, why would I ever use a do in order block? If that's what's there by default, wouldn't I not need to use it? And the answer is you definitely do need it. The reason you need it is because we'll encounter in this lesson something called a nested loop, where you're going to want something happening in order while at the same time something is happening together. It's probably easier to see it in action than it is to visualize it, so let's get on with the development of a program that animates some of the carnival equipment in Alice. So what we're going to do in lesson 6.1 is simply go through some of the objects and Pretend that our goal is to animate them. I guess not pretend, our goal is to actually animate them, but go through a program development process. We'll start by adding an object from the amusement parks gallery. The object that I want to get is this Ferris wheel right here, so I'm going to take a Ferris wheel and drag it into my scene. Since I want to see the whole Ferris wheel, I'm going to position my camera by dra dragging it back and raising the elevation until I get the entire object in my scene. Perfect. So I've got this thing positioned where I want it, and I'm going to select it over here in my objects panel on the left. Well, the first thing that I want to happen is I want this entire assembly to roll around one time. We're going to animate a single roll revolution of this, but I can't select the whole Ferris wheel because I don't want that, the whole Ferris wheel to spin around. All I want is the double wheel right now. So make sure that you have the double wheel subpart selected. And with that selected, we're going to drag this to our method window. And I want it to roll to the right by one revolution. Incremental development is the process of constantly running your program to see what happens so that you can avoid bugs. So let's go ahead and hit play and see what's wrong with our animation now. We can see it's going much, much, much too fast. In order to fix that, I'm simply going to add a duration argument here, and I'm going to want this animation to occur over 12 seconds. That should be about right. So now let's hit play and see what happens. There we go. That animation is probably running at an appropriate speed, so I'm going to leave that there for now. The next thing that I want to do is animate the individual uh, arms of this double Ferris wheel. And I can do that by drilling down into these subparts and I see I have access to wheel number one and wheel number two. So let's go ahead and take wheel number one and we're going to have this roll to the right by one revolution as well. And wheel number two is going to roll to the right by one revolution. In order to make these all happen at the same time, I'm going to have to put these all in a do-together loop. Another thing that will help you out when making your do-together loops is to make sure that everything is running in the same duration. If I were to run this now, the double Ferris wheel would take 12 seconds, and these two animations would be done in one second because that's their default. When we hit play, See, it just doesn't quite look right. right? Somebody would probably die on that ride, and, and that's not exactly what we're going for. So we're going to stop this animation, and we're going to add the 12 second duration to those animations as well. Now let's hit play and see if that improved it. And it's looking a little bit better. That's kind of what we want our ride to look like. To help break this animation up and maybe make it a little bit more exquisite, what I'm going to do is have these 
little sub-assemblies, these wheels. I want them to rotate once, pause, and then rotate in the other direction, all while this double wheel is making one rotation. And I can do that. The first thing I'm going to do is take the duration of the rotations and set it to 6 seconds instead of 12. That's exactly half of the amount of time it will take the double wheel to make one full assembly. If I were to run this right now, it might look a little bit goofy. That's because those wheels are going to rotate for 6 seconds, but the rest of the animation takes a full 12 seconds, so it will kind of pause in the middle. But we're going to fix that right now. What we want to happen is in order, we're going to add a do in order statement. And in the do in order statement, we're going to add another do together statement and add those two blocks of code that we put in there. So what this says is that the Ferris wheel is going to roll right one revolution over 12 seconds. While that's going to happen, in order, we'll be doing together both Ferris wheels rotating right one revolution over six seconds. Then I'm going to grab another do together statement, place it after the nested do together statement, and I want Ferris wheel one to roll left one revolution over six seconds. So let's add the argument there. And I want wheel number two to roll left one revolution. And I want that to happen over six seconds. The whole animation is still 12 seconds long. This block of code, or this line of code right here, the Ferris wheel making its full revolution, will take 12 seconds. While that's going on, in order, wheel number one will make its, wheels one and two will rotate right over six seconds, and then they'll rotate left over six seconds. Both of these animations take six seconds each, which will match it up to the 12 seconds of the whole animation. So let's see what this looks like here. So they're ro rotating to the left now, they pause, and now they're rotating to the right. So we have a little bit more of an exotic animation there. And I might even want to add a pause in there. We could do something like taking this animation and setting it to 15 seconds instead of 12. I now have 12 seconds of animation here, but 15 seconds here. To gap that time, I can use the command here at the bottom called wait and drag that between the two do in order statements and tell the animation that I want it to wait for three seconds after the first sub animation is done. When I hit play now, the wheels will rotate for six seconds, pause for three seconds, and then rotate in the other direction for six seconds. There's really no limit to the amount of animations that I can do or how I do this. I can set the number of revolutions up if I want. I can change the order and the direction and the distance. and All these things are available to me. But the important concept here is that of nested statements. This looks really confusing to a lot of beginning Alice programmers. But it's not that bad. What we're saying is all of this is going to be done together. The Ferris wheel is going to roll right for 15 seconds, and while that's going on, while that 15 seconds is occurring, in order, we're going to roll the Ferris wheel, wheel number one and two right for six seconds, and that will happen together. The whole animation will pause, or that whole sub-animation will pause for three seconds, and then in another do-together statement, we'll have the wheel roll the opposite direction for six seconds. And that's really all there is to animating the Ferris wheel. If it doesn't quite make sense, just give it some practice and it'll come to you. So that's going to wrap up lesson 6.2 on animating the Ferris wheel. Uh, we're going to continue these concepts by animating a horse race in the next uh, lesson. Lesson 6.3 will be a continuation of this one right here. Uh, this lesson was just starting to run a little bit long, but uh, we'll continue nesting do together and do in order statements to create a realistic horse race with the game that's in the amusement parks gallery.
So head on over to lesson 6.3. That'll be the second part of this lesson. As always, if you had any problems with this lesson, you faced any challenges or something that's not quite working right for you, leave those questions in the comments and I can certainly help you out with them. As always, thank you for watching the Alice tutorial series and have a great day.